Now you may be thinking, another browser comparison where he'll be showing us some useless and meaningless metrics that are just used to compare browser performance and RAM usage. Actually, no, I'm also gonna be looking at customizability and usability along with performance. Uh, so something that is also a very well-rounded browser. Of course, not one of these browsers is gonna win in their own category because not one is better than the other. It's not like a best browser comparison. It's gonna be best for what your needs are, efficiency, productivity, or proficiency. For these ones, we're gonna be looking at Vivaldi, Safari, and Firefox. I'm gonna skip right to the end of the video and tell you that um, from my findings, Vivaldi is the most customizable browser, Firefox is the most usable browser, and Safari is the fastest browser. Of course, I have probably aggravated you all about just now, so let me explain. So here we are in the Vivaldi app. Of course, we have these three options it gives us, which allows us to access certain parts of Vivaldi uh, to get started. So if we find that um, we don't need the panels, the status bar, or uh, different mail calendar feeds, anything like that, then we can say that we don't want that. We click continue. Now this is the part where customizability comes in. Of course, you have all these themes to start off with, whereas a lot of the theater browsers that come with um, very little themes, like uh, just a dark and light theme. Right? Of course, you can have a light and dark theme with this one. It goes automatically based on your system setting, but you can add some customizability to it, such as like going full black, or let's say adding some color touch into it, like that pink theme, or this blueprint type theme, which really looks really modern, I really like it, uh, or like a subtle theme, whatever you want to do. But I'm gonna stick with, yeah, stick with the dark theme. Of course, you can have the uh, tab positionings, a new feature in Microsoft does it edge as well, being you can put your tabs on the left side, um, otherwise known as side tabs. This one allows you to put it there, but it also allows you to put it on the bottom and the right side as well. Bottom resembling sort of like the huge browser style. Of course, it gives us a great way to hand off and start us trying out these new features in browsers that are not available in other browsers or are not available in most other browsers. Now, the main thing is being tab tiling, web panels, and notes, which I'll get into right now. So this is our start page right here, very similar to a lot of the other start pages. One thing to note is that it starts out with Bing. So of course, being on a usability standpoint, you have to change your web browser from default. So that's one thing that you may or may not like, but it gives us some really good pages that are highly visited and it gives you some really good options for those pages. So let's head on to like Amazon. Of course, it gives us lots more settings in terms of customization. So let's say you want to add this page uh, to a web panel. All right, let's click add. And now the Amazon is in this tiny little web panel that you can view on the side while you were doing something else. So let's say on our main page, it's going to youtube.com. Now when we have youtube.com, we're simultaneously looking at products, right? Of course, you can also have tiled windows. So you want to say, hey, I want to tile this window uh, horizontally, right? Now there's three windows on here that you are looking at and all give you enough room to actually experience the web in the best way and the most responsive way. So that is going to be very awesome for those in the product, product, productive type field being the most productive and a browser. You don't need to, you don't need to install a lot of plugins for the browser either because it comes with a lot of filters if you want to do some debugging if you're on the developer side. So let's say I want to turn on a CS debugger and it only does it for specific pages, right? There's almost like a um, setting for each different pane or each different web page you're on, which is nice. So now this is highlighting a bunch of CSS grid options and put the border on everything, right? Of course, you also have the native reader view, which is in Safari and also um, throws away any ads that you need, giving you a very easy to use experience, right? Of course, you have all of the status line features down here. Um, you can take a break, of course. There's like that break manager that tells you, you know, you're, um, it's time to like cool down, whatever you, whatever you like to do. There's almost just too many features that you have here. And this is just on the browser itself. Now, if you want to go into preferences, that's a whole different thing. So this is the preferences. Uh, you can change so many settings that you want. Most likely a lot of people are going to go to the tabs. So if you want to do like the two level tabs, right? So there's two levels of tabs if they want to overflow each other. So making your browser not look as like a very crunched down type of view, but all and maintaining readability of the title bars, which is really nice. Vivaldi is really awesome for customization and that's why it proves my point. Now, why doesn't it get the best title for performance? Well, since it's based on Chromium, of course it, it writes more to the SSD for caches and also doesn't have the same optimizations as Safari has. But, but it does have the pro allowing you to hibernate tabs. So let's say let's say you want to hibernate all the other tabs. You just click on the right click on the tab you don't want to, I mean, you, you want to focus on. And you click on hibernate background tabs and that tab is now hibernated. When you want to go back to that tab, you just click on it and it reloads. And therefore it uses less RAM in the process, keeping it nice and optimized. And yes, because of its huge feature set and um, let's say foreign interface for lots of native Chrome users, 
This one is going to be a little bit harder to use and get used to than something, let's say, like, let's say Firefox, which I'm going to get into. But this one's the prize for most customizable browser, which is exactly what it looks like it's aims to be. And now we move on to the most usable browser, which I found for my findings, which is Firefox. So I've loaded up the um, Firefox setup page, of course, just reinstalling the browser. And we can just go through the setup process, see how it looks. So it says keep Firefox in your dock for easy access. No other browser has ever asked me that before. So that's nice. I'll just click on not now. And it just says make Firefox your default. It's like a really easy process to go through, similar to how Vivaldi sort of sets you up. Um, you can import passwords and all, same sort of thing as Vivaldi. And you have lots of color options for this one, which they've added in the new Firefox version. So you can, I'm going to stick with a dark theme. So I want to go with like a dark orangish type color or like a pinkish type tone, whatever you'd like, right? Or go with a balanced theme. You have lots of options. Um, it just goes off of the color that you'd like. And I want to just stick with the dark theme or let's just say auto. So now we can start browsing. So it brings us to the, the awesome homepage of Firefox, bringing us recommendations from Pocket and showing us the Google search bar. It comes off with, uh, it comes with the same thing as Vivaldi, lots of popular websites that are going to be changed based on your actual browsing history. And Pocket right here allows you to actually save articles by using the Pocket extension, which comes included. So really great browsing experience there. And the tab bar is a really cool floating um, tab menu, which I am not, I'm definitely not a fan of at all, but I know a lot of people really do like it. The actual interface itself is a lot less crowded than Vivaldi. There is no bottom status line. Um, and the top bar is really minimalist. There's no homepage button by default. Refresh button on the right, left side. And we have the reader view, of course, that you can use and is very usable as well. Saving into pocket is also very nice there. You can arguments can be made about its performance as well as customizability because you can customize a lot of this. So let's say if you wanted to go to settings and, and manage, manage more settings, you can see there's a lot less tab icon buttons on the left side and extensions and themes is supported by the Firefox themes, but it doesn't have as much uh, extensions as the Chrome web store may or may not be a good thing because that means that it's a more select few, which is really great even on Safari but that might be a put off result for a lot of people. So that's one thing to consider there. In terms of themes and customizations, you can still get themes from the Firefox web, web store, which is really nice. And the last, and in my opinion, the fastest browser we get to is Safari. So Safari, it is not does, does not support Chrome extensions because it is not a Chromium browser similar to Firefox. In terms of themes, you have a light and dark available, which is not a huge selection. In terms of extensions, they have to be approved from Apple because they are on the App Store and App Store, and Apple has a rigorous texting process to make sure that one, it, the extensions don't slow down the browser by a huge amount, and two, they're going to actually benefit the browser and the audience of the browser. So those are two things that are, are going to put on in terms of customizability because they don't have that much extensions. The, the layout of the browser itself is sort of um, different from how a Chrome browser would be. Of course, you can get, definitely get used to it, but the tab bar, the search bar on the top right can be customized to have different types of tab layouts. So if you want to go to tabs, then you can have the separate tabs. So let's say if I want to go on YouTube and if I want to go on Amazon. So those are two different tabs. And basically, you can have it as compact, right? So they are the actual search bar is the tabs, right? And you can switch tabs quite easily, of course, um, and also change the actual website URL. So that's very nice to use. The tab bar is a little bit compact, though, and it's not like it's sort of unlike any how any other browser has implemented it before. And for developers, the develop menu is not even available by default. You have to go into the advanced preferences and then enable the develop menu, and then you get the inspect element um, allowed. So. That's one thing to consider in terms of usability. I'm sure I'll be hearing a lot from you guys in the comments about your thoughts, which I really do encourage, but those are some things that I have noticed for the Safari browser. Since Safari users are only allowed to be using Mac OS, since Safari for Windows was discontinued a while ago, Apple does, no, does not have to worry about any sort of integrations or API optimizations for other platforms like Firefox, Chrome, or Vivaldi you have to do. So, so the Safari team also gets a head notice on new Mac OS versions so they can update beforehand. They don't have to hear from an announcement and then implement any sort of new API features or JavaScript rendering features to make optimizations in the browser, allowing them to make minimal SSD caching writing and also minimum RAM usage without having to hibernate tabs like all those Chromium browsers would have to actually do to not be RAM hogs per se. Now, of course, I've not mentioned all of the features of these browsers beforehand, definitely not for those for Vivaldi, but I do feel that my points have related to the comparison points I originally looked at, which was which was customizability, usability, and performance. Those aligning with your values, such as proficiency, productivity, and efficiency. But of course, you make arguments for all of those. I'd like to love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. 
If you did enjoy my thoughts on the video, be sure to drop a like. Thanks so much for watching. This is Rahil Janae, and I'll see you in the next one.